Hey guys, what's going on? Chindi here. So today we'll look at how to create this really cool interaction in Figma with cars scrolling in opposite directions. Actually, someone hit me up on Twitter asking how he could do this. And I thought, instead of just giving him directions, why don't I make it into a tutorial? So here we are. Let's dive into it. So to begin, we hit A, select the screen we're working with. I typically like working with this um, iPhone 14 display. It's kind of like a middle ground. It works for basically everything. So the next thing we'll do here is to add some random text. Um, okay, so add a next button. We can make a copy of this. Uh, we got a back button. Okay. Okay. Uh, now to the main stuff. Well, why we're here. So I'll make a small frame. Make this a thirty-six. I think that's cool. Name this image frame. Change the fill. Content reel comes to the rescue. Okay, so select so maybe this dude. So we'll just go ahead and make 10 of these boxes and fill them. I'll just cut to when I'm done with that. It's basically the same process, so there's no, no reason to show you. Okay, so we have 10 boxes. Now what I'll do is I'll separate them. I have two groups of five boxes. So there's the first five up top. There's a second set of five down here. We can close this now. So the first set is going to go in one direction and the second set is going to go in another direction. So we'll wrap this in an auto layout uh, direction one then wrap this in another layout maybe direction two so for both of these I'll make them um, align downwards vertically now the next thing we'll do is to put this inside the frame so I will hit command alt G and that automatically wraps it within a frame. And you'll see the reason why we're doing this in a little bit. I was going to change the spacing, but I think it's fine. We can leave it the way it is. It's, you can adjust that when you're recreating this. So we'll name this, I think we'll just keep the name. We'll just name the, the exterior frame, direction one as well. Then, uh select clip content or let's leave it unchecked for now so the next thing to do right now is select all five frames in here and make duplicates of them so we'll hit down until the first frame becomes the last all over again so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to loop this or we're trying to make it feel like this is a loop um, and you get the point of this particular step when we get to the prototyping phase of this. So I'll just go ahead and select clip content. Now the next thing I'll do is to make this into a component, command alt k. We'll call this, direction one is fine, we can keep that name. Then uh, we'll create a variant of this. I usually like, um, uh, converting these components, adding an auto layout to these components, it just helps make it um, neater when organizing stuff. So I'll go ahead and either you can either hit this plus or command D to duplicate, but let's just hit this plus. 
So for this second variant, what we'll do is this. This uh, direction one um, auto layout will just make it align to bottom. You might not have noticed anything, but what happened here is that this auto layout moved all the way to the last um, image at the very bottom, while the first one stops at the first five. Um, I'll increase this space a little bit. Now, to the uh, prototyping controls. So what you do next here, so the next step here is to click on the prototype tab, then you drag this and select after delay. We'll set delay to one millisecond. Um, then we'll change this to smart animate. Um, so we want it to take a significant amount of time. So maybe 5,000 milliseconds. Um, that's even probably still fast, but that's okay. We'll look at it to see uh, how that plays back and adjust it if it doesn't feel right. So now let's just, let's take a look. Let's preview it. I'll paste it inside this frame and hit shift space bar. So you see um, what this looks like. You see that, you see that, you see that, you see that? Nice. Okay, so this is cool, but the missing element here is it doesn't loop. And that's what we're going for. We want it to loop perpetually. And that's the next thing we're going to do. So I'll close this preview window. I'll go back here. Let me select the second state. So I'll go back to the prototype tab. Then what I'll do here is I'll select this. I've heard people call it noodles. I don't know why, but it kind of looks like noodles, but whatever. So yeah, drag that arrow back to this next, to the first state. Then what I'll do here is to change this to um, after delay, one millisecond, that's the, the, the amount of delay is going to have. Then change this from smart animate to instance. So what that will do is when it gets to the end, it makes it go back to the first state and it looks like nothing happened because one millisecond is basically not visible to the human eye. So you wouldn't notice that it went back to the top. Um, okay, and I, there's something we need to fix on the first state because I noticed that it has an ease, uh, an ease out applied to it, but this will be a bit problematic. We want it to be linear because if it eases, you're going to know when it stops and goes back to the previous state. So we want it to be a linear animation. And what this would look like is this. So it will basically keep going and you would literally not know where, where it stops. That's the beauty of what we just pulled off here. And this is actually the really, this is the magic of this entire tutorial. Every other thing here is just, you know, to make it look nice and stuff. You can really stop here, I promise you, you're good. You've got the, the, the gist of it. So we'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this component. Um, literally named direction to guess. Okay, so what we'll do, similar to what we did with the first one, we'll select all of these boxes here, make a duplicate, push it down to the bottom. Then um, I'll copy this or just command X, I'll cut it. Um, when you want to paste something, directly over an other object in Figma, you want it to maintain the exact coordinates of the of the object you're pasting it on top. Just hold Command Shift V. It's going to maintain the position of that previous object that you're pasting it over. So we'll delete this. Do the same thing on this second one, Command Shift V. Then, delete it, but we have to do one, uh, something else here. So since we want this to go in opposite directions, what we'll do is for this first one, we'll select the auto layout inside and align it to bottom. Then for the second state, we want to align the auto layout to the top. 
And what this will do is it will make it go in the opposite direction as the first um, component that we built. So let's hit uh, shift space bar to see what this looks like. That's it. That's the magic right there. Okay, so let's make this look pretty and call it a day. Now the next thing we'll do is this. Um, we'll make... Okay, let me bring these two out. Uh, put them in an auto layout. Shift A. Call it uh, images comp. Then we'll make duplicates of them again and move them. So we have like little bits of the first and the last one showing at the edges. Um, so that's really what we're going for. I'll make a duplicate of this. I'll name this image holder. Delete all the content inside. So we want to put this image comp inside this frame. Uh, so I'll maybe reduce the height to 700. Uh, so I'll cut this and paste it in here. Then center it using these controls. The next thing we want to do is we want to tilt this auto layout by a little bit. Uh, yeah, 15 is fine. I think 15 is cool. So we actually get that little... Uh, uh, where we have we see some parts of it visible at the two edges of the screen, and that's really what we're going for. So the final thought here is this: I'm going to create a rectangle. You can use a frame if you so we'll call this gradient. So we we'll make this a gradient. Make the top zero. I'll move this gradient into the frame, center it, uh, and drag it to the bottom. Uh, and duplicate this as well. Shift V to flip it vertically, then take this to the top. Now, this is what you're going to have. And in my opinion, I think this looks great. Really, it does. Um, but I guess I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So let me show you the perfectionist way of doing it. And I think this is beautiful, right? This is fine. So you can use the delay to um, tweak the speed of the, of the components, of the two different um, components. And, you know, there you have it. But... If you give me three more minutes, I'll show you a nicer effect that you can add to the top and the bottom to make it look even better. So what I'll do here is this. Um, I'll bring out this gradient, uh, make it a solid, I'll just use the color picker, uh, make it a solid object. So the next thing we'll do is to make two copies of this rectangle object. We'll leave one as gradient, the next one is going to be the blur. And the third one is going to be the mask. Now, what I'll do is I'll select all three of them, hit command control M to insert both the blur and the gradient into the mask. And I'll select this gradient. Basically, I, I'll just copy the other gradient. Uh, so, command alt T, command alt V. Then uh, this blob will set the opacity to 1%. And we'll apply a blur to it. So uh, change this to background blur and do maybe like an 80. Um, okay, so the mask will change the fill. So I think this would be better if we actually did it inside this frame. So you see the thing changing as we're modifying it. So I'll move this mask into this image holder frame. Now you can see how this looks, right? You see the blur effect it gives it at the bottom, right? 
So this this um, blur, if we hide it, this is what it looks like. Just like the regular gradient. Um, without the gradient, this is what it looks like. So the final thing we need to do is to apply a linear gradient to this mask. And when we do that, this is what it's going to look like. Um, so we'll set this one to 0% opacity. Then we'll drag this up to a place, you know, to wherever we are satisfied with um, how it looks. So the thing I love about this particular effect is how the thing falls off, you know, gradually at some point. You know, like it just diffuses that bottom part of it. It makes it softer instead of the sharp gradient that you typically have. So the final thing I'll do is I'll just duplicate this and have it at the top as well. Hit Shift V. Um, so for this one, I don't want it to be to cover you know a significant amount of the screen. So I'll just move it up a bit more. Paste it right over this one. Hit Shift Spacebar to see the magic we've created, and this is what it looks like. So if you've enjoyed this. Um, stick around. This was fun. Peace.